Hey Mercedes. How may I help you? This is a Mercedes Maybach GLS 600. It is an ultra luxury SUV with an MSRP of almost $200,000. In this video, I'm going to show you all the incredible gizmos and gadgets. This right here is the Maybach logo. And Maybach is an ultra premium brand that dates all the way back to the early 1900s. They were eventually acquired by Daimler-Benz and in 2002, a separate brand was created to compete with the likes of Rolls-Royce. That separate brand went away in 2012, but the Maybach name is back on vehicles like this GLS. And here's a great way to think about it. A Mercedes AMG is the ultimate high performance Mercedes. A Mercedes Maybach is the ultra luxury Mercedes. And that's what this vehicle is. Being the ultimate in Maybach luxury, we have to start with the gizmos and gadgets in the back seat. But even getting into the back seat is an experience. The GLS 600 has deployable running boards, but they are not like any running boards I have ever seen. Simply by opening the door, they gently glide out from underneath the vehicle and you can see just how over-engineered and over-designed this running board is. First of all, we have the Maybach logo, but take a look at the width here for the rear passengers. It's got to be well over eight, nine inches wide and it's actually wider in the rear than it is in the front, just so that the rear passengers have a little bit more of a VIP experience. The Mercedes Maybach GLS 600 is only available as a five or a four seater. There is no third row option available. Now, if you get the four seater like this configuration, you can spec it out to the ultimate in luxury business jet travel. And here's what I mean. Take a look at the seats. These seats are incredible. They actually moved them back in the GLS for additional room. But first of all, we've got a suede headrest up here at the top. Just below that, you'll notice the lumbar pillow. It's of course marked Maybach here and Maybach on the back. And at the base of the seat, there's a footrest that extends for a, a lay down experience. In fact, the whole seat is completely adjustable just to fit your ultimate and luxury needs. The rear seats, just like the front, are fully adjustable via this switch panel here on the door. Now, just like the front seats, you can slide them forward and backwards. You can also recline them. You can adjust the headrest electrically and then the best part is the footrest, which extends by pulling up on this front portion. See on the passenger side here, I can push and hold this button, and then the front seat extends, and this rear seat will go into a sleeping mode of sorts. So I have a uh, room to lay down completely or at least that's the idea. Beyond the adjustability of the seats, I also have controls for heating and ventilation on both rear seats. If you're wondering why I took my shoes off, it's to fully experience these beautifully made carpets. These are some of the thickest carpets in the industry. They're not quite Rolls Royce soft, but they are very, very plush. And uh, well, okay, I wanted to feel what they'd feel like on my feet, but also I didn't want them to get all snowy because I imagine they're also very expensive. So what's it like driving the GLS 600? Well, it's kind of like driving a Panzer tank from the roof well, sitting on an air mattress, it is incredibly solid. It feels so heavy, and yet it just floats. It just wafts down the road. The secret sauce of the GLS 600 is actually a special drive mode called Maybach. And when I select Maybach, everything pretty much just disappears from the world. It's silent, it's smooth, the steering is incredibly overboosted, but it becomes easy to drive. It feels smaller than it is. I mean, it just dials out the outside world. This does have something called e-active body control, so if you dial in like a sport mode or something called curve, it will firm up a little bit and it will become a little bit more sporty. And when you floor it, oh wow! Whew, that is quick. It's not as violent as the AMG version, but let me tell you what, it will embarrass most SUVs out there. Here at the rear of the GLS, we have a seven inch tablet and this tablet basically controls every function in both the back and the front seats. So look at this, I can control the radio station, the media, I can go into the comfort settings 
and control my massage for the back seat. How amazing is that? Tons of different massage options. I can also use it as a remote control to control the central display up there. So believe it or not, I can toggle and it moves the middle display in the front. That is really, really wild. And I can go in and even control various settings throughout the vehicle, such as the ambient lighting, all via this dial on the rear of the vehicle. It just goes to show how tailored this Mercedes Maybach is for rear seat passengers. And one of my favorite features is actually the sun blinds. Now I can control these sun blinds using these various switches here on the door panel, or I can do it on the tablet. So for example, if I wanna close the driver's side rear window shade, touch that button, and it glides open, or I should say glides closed, depending on your perspective. And I can even click this button here that says close everything, and stuff such as the sunshade for the roof will close as well. Now this really is just a tablet. I can actually eject a tablet using that button there. And now I've got control of it with my, uh, my hands and I can click this exit MBUX button. And now it works just as you know a normal tablet with the Google Play Store and Chrome and email and all that stuff. Here in the front of this massive center console, we have a number of really cool things. Now there's this giant cubby that slides open and we see the rear cup holders. Now we've got a big one and a little one, but even cooler than that, you can either cool or heat your beverages depending on what you're drinking in the back seat or turn it off completely. Now this right here are the holders for the optional champagne flutes. Now the champagne flutes would live back here in this holder. Unfortunately, Mercedes did not provide the champagne flutes with this car to test. I figure because they are very expensive, but behind the champagne flutes, we see the optional fridge. Now the fridge, has two levels of temperature adjustment. And when you open it up, you can see how deep it extends and there's even cutouts for champagne bottles. Now for rear seat passengers, you'll notice a cell phone holder which doubles as a wireless charger. It even fits the larger iPhones and it slots in there nice and securely. And the cool thing is it's positioned so that you can use your iPhone while charging. Now behind that, we see something really unusual. By folding up the center console, you'll notice two trays just like what you'd find in first class on a jet. These are great for getting work done. They're great for maybe having a small meal. Look how cool that is. They're also leather lined, they're metal. They feel really high quality. They fold up with a nice click and then they stow away completely out of sight. Rear seat passengers have access to these handy grab handles which fold down from the ceiling. And here we can see the rear seat map lights as well. I love how Mercedes Maybach finished off the rear end of this vehicle in this optional piano black leather with flowing trim lines. It looks very yacht-like. I also like how they sculpted out the area where the seats can fold into when you fold them back. It's just very premium, very high end. One of the most striking features on the outside of the Maybach GLS 600 is this paint scheme. Now this is very bespoke to this car. It's a two-tone paint scheme and it is beautiful, but it's also extremely expensive. The two-tone here is an $18,500 option. It's extremely well done, beautifully precise, but it better be for uh, the price of an entry-level compact car. First of all, the grille and the front venting is entirely redesigned compared to the standard Mercedes. Now, you've got this chrome kind of mesh in the front, and then you've got this big waterfall grille that says, Maybach on it, but a little bit more interesting than that is actually the Mercedes emblem that sticks out from the hood. I don't believe, and let me know in the comment section below, but I don't believe any other version of the Mercedes GLS offers the standalone hood ornament. It's also a little bit flexy, I assume, for pedestrian and for theft prevention, but it's an old school touch that I absolutely love. The wheels are also unique to the Maybach. First of all, they say Maybach here on the center cap, and they are available in 22 or 23 inch wheel options. Stepping around to the rear of the vehicle, we of course have the Maybach script along the left, and then on the right, it's written GLS 600. In the standard Mercedes GLS range, you can get this up to a 580. Step up to the A and G trim, it'll say GLS 63. Now the 600 is the top of the line model. Now back in the old days, 600 would mean that this had a six liter engine, but it doesn't. Let's take a look at what's underneath the hood. Underneath the hood of the GLS 600, you'll find a four liter bi-turbo V8. It's actually a similar engine to what you'd find in the AMG 63, 
but it doesn't make as much power. Now the AMG 63 makes over 600 horsepower. In the Maybach, it makes 550 horsepower and 538 pound-feet of torque. Mercedes Maybach says that the zero to 60 time on this vehicle is under five seconds. So not bad for a vehicle with tray tables. <laughs> this needs to be the benchmark for all new Mercedes and Maybach products, at least in terms of driving dynamics. This drives like how I imagine a 1960s Mercedes limousine would drive. It just isolates you from everything. It's incredibly soft. It's not sporty, but driving around here in the US, I rarely feel the need for the sporty driving experience, at least every day, because we're stuck in traffic, we're stuck on the highway, we don't have these little B roads or zippy roads that they have in Germany or Austria for the most part. And this is the ideal driving experience for the United States. You just sit back, turn on the massage, turn on the ventilated seat, and go straight for miles on end. Stepping into the front seat of the Maybach, at first glance, it doesn't look all that different from other Mercedes GLS products, but when you start looking carefully, you notice a ton of little craftsman details. Basically, every material in the Maybach is wrapped in stitched leather. You won't find any plastic in this vehicle. Even stuff like here on the A-pillar, stitched leather. The headliner, stitched leather. Grabbing the grab handle, yep, stitched leather. Even the sun visor, you guessed it stitched leather. It is beautifully made. And speaking of the sun visor, it extends like this. And if you have the sun visor out in the retracted position, they even include a little mini sun visor. So you've got both fields of view blocked from the sun and a little mini sun visor. Of course, it's leather wrapped. Here in the center of the Maybach, we've got a big cubby that slides forward, revealing a wireless charging tray and dual cup holders with, of course, a heating and a cooling element. Behind that, we've got controls for the center screen as well as different drive modes. And just behind that, we've got the palm rest for your hand and controls for the suspension and the uh, traction control and the manual mode and the transmission. The screen in the center of the Mercedes is pretty standard to every other GLS and it's very easy to use. It's the latest MBUX. Of course, we do have massaging front seats as well, just like the rear. We also have cool gauges that show you various info about the vehicle and the engine and the consumption. Uh, and beyond that, various apps and settings. Uh, super easy to use, but my favorite feature is actually the theme so we can set up the gauges and the infotainment for a sport driving setting which is a kind of funny in a Maybach or maybe we can go to an off-road setting and then the off-road adventure setting they display a G-Wagon then that's going to show me my cameras and here on the gauge cluster it'll show me the various formatic displays as well as pitch and yaw so very configurable and when it comes to the dual 11.6 inch screens being a digital instrument cluster it's completely configurable here on the buy box so right now i have my tachometer and my speedometer with of course the little tiny mybach emblem but take a look at this i can actually change what is displayed in that circle I could have eco displays, navigation, <laughs> G-Force if you uh, want your G-Force, uh, various driver assistance, formatic screens, and suspension settings as well. But I can actually change the overall design of these screens. So if I go home here and go into designs and displays, I can have a progressive display. That's going to get rid of the dials pretty much all together, at least in the traditional sense. Here, I'll show you what it looks like on the tack. Um, like that, or I can go into an understated display, designs and displays, understated, and now I've got a clock and just a generic speedometer. It's, it's so cool how you can configure this to any preference you could possibly want or imagine, and it's all done using these controls here in the steering wheel. One of the coolest features in the Mercedes Maybach is in the glove box. It is the air freshener. Now, several other Mercedes products incorporate this, but this one is actually the Mercedes Maybach scent. If you're wondering what Maybach smells like, it's kind of like lavender. It's a really uh, elegant, gentle smell. Now, that scent is actually displayed when you go into some energizing comfort settings here in the screen. So I can set it to refresh, I can set it to warmth, I can set it to vitality, nice start. It'll play some invigorating music. It'll also uh, massage me in a certain way to kind of bring me back into a, um, a positive and engaged setting, or I can maybe, you know, chill out a little bit. Well-being. 
And this all changes the sense as well as you go along and it plays various graphics and uh, different music. Uh, it's very kind of an interesting idea. The Maybach GLS600 might have more speakers than an IMAX movie theater. They're Burmeister sound and speakers are everywhere with these really cool machined speaker grates. So we've got one at the base of each driver and passenger door. And then up here on the A pillar, we have two right next to each other. So three on the left front door, three in the right front door, that is six so far. We've got a ginormous speaker here in the front of the dash, so that's gonna be seven. We have a speaker up here by the dome light, so that is eight. On the rear doors, we have nine, and then 10 up here on the rear door, so we've got two on each rear door, so that's nine, 10, 11, 12. We've got one up here on the roof, that's 13. Another one on the other side for 14. In the very back here, we have two more, so 17 and then 18 on the other side. Now, admittedly, that is a lot of speakers and I'm probably missing some somewhere on the inside, but that is rather engulfed by the number of Maybach emblems and script. Starting out with the front here, we've got one with the big Maybach written across the front. And then, of course, there are two per wheel, so that is eight on the wheels for a total of nine. One on each D pillar, so that's 10 and 11. Got one on the back here for 12. I'm going to count the license plate frame as well, so that's 13. There is one on each door sill, so 14, 15, 16, 17. Then we've got the pedals, which are really nice, by the way, but 18, 19. This is 20 here on the steering wheel. This right here is 21 on the center console. Here on the air freshener, we're at 22. There is, of course, one on each running board, so 23, 24. Then on the back of both front seats, there's, of course, a Maybach emblem, so 25, 26. 27 here for the emblem on the fridge. 28 for this pillow. 29 for this pillow. Same thing on the other one, so 30 and 31. 32 for the Maybach emblem here on the view blocker in the trunk. And then, of course, right here in the engine, we've got another emblem, 33, and that's 33, not counting the virtual emblems that pop up when you start the vehicle up. There are a few ways to get into the back of the GLS 600. You can use a key, you can use a button, or in theory, you can do a kick. You can, it works, that's awesome. Now let's take a look at the gazmos and gidgets, <laughs> gadgets and gizmos, <laughs> in the rear of the GLS. Unfortunately, if you spec the rear fridge on the Maybach, you do lose a tremendous amount of trunk space. It just eats up a huge amount of valuable storage here in the center of the vehicle. And then because it's got these crazy captain's chairs, you can't fold them down either. So you're pretty stuck in what you can carry in the rear end of this vehicle. But apart from the fridge, you do have these nice little liners here for the rear of the uh, cargo area. A little bit of additional storage underneath this rear tray, no spare tire. And then there's a little button here so you can lower the air suspension if you need a little bit of help loading or unloading items. This Maybach does have four corner air suspension which you can lower and raise via this toggle here in the middle of the vehicle. And here's what it looks like going from the lowest suspension setting to the highest. The GLS also gives you this little bubble that shows you what suspension height you're at. So right now I'm in the sport mode, but if I head into the off-road height, you'll see that as the suspension rises, so does that little bubble. And it'll show you at what point it's fully reached its max or lowest height. This GLS 600 starts at $160,000. The one you see here is $190,000. Now that is a lot of money for a GLS, but this is a Maybach. And this is what I love about this vehicle. It really stands out from the rest of the GLS lineup. It feels special. It feels quieter, softer, more refined than every GLS I've driven. It, it's so quiet in here. It's so just floaty in here. It's awesome. Now for $190,000, you could of course get a very well equipped G-Wagon. And that, that's a tough call for me. I mean, the G-Wagon is much more capable. It's also a little bit cooler looking, I think, but this is better for daily driving. This is better for long road trips. The back seat is superb. The front seats are better. It's just much more refined than the G-Wagon. But of course, you can't go cruise around Moab like you could in the G. There you have it, the cool gizmos and gadgets with the Mercedes Maybach GLS 600. What a cool piece of tech and luxury all mixed into one. Now, I was worried that this would feel like a slightly freshened up GLS, but on the road, in the cabin, it does feel like something truly bespoke and something truly special. Let me know what you think of the Mercedes Maybach GLS 600 in the comments section below. And as always, this is Tommy with The Fast Lane Car. Check out tflcar.com for the latest and greatest in new SUV reviews.